We could have events in the future where the power grid will go down and it's not in any reasonable time coming back on. For instance, if when the power grid went down, uh, some of our large transformers were destroyed, damaged beyond use. Uh, we don't make any of those in this country. They're made overseas and uh, you order one and 18 months to two years later, they will deliver it. Uh, our power grid is very vulnerable. It is very much on the edge. Our military knows that. You know, one of the things I think of is, is in the event of a disaster, what do people do? They flock to the stores. They buy up all their staples and water. So your, your store will be empty faster than it's ever been empty before. When this, when this thing happens to this country, all financial support will be taken away from us. There'll be no financial support. We have to learn how to live without money. And uh, the guy in the country is the one who's going to do this. A rural area is not a fruitful area for terrorism. The terrorists are going to be looking for the biggest bang for their buck they can get, the highest yield of death. And that's exactly why they mention such things as malls and uh, stadiums and where there are going to be large concentrations of people. So there are a number of events that could create a situation in the cities where civil unrest would be a very high probability. And I think that those who can and those who understand need to take advantage of the opportunity when these winds of strife are not blowing to move their families out. I'll tell you something else about this. It's just plain fun. When you're looking at the challenge of what do I have to do so that I'm independent of the system? We need to get out. A storm is coming, relentless in its fury. Are we prepared to meet it? Scientists at the Colorado University of, at Boulder tell us that in July of 2012, there was a massive solar flare, probably known as a coronal mass ejection or in short, a CME. Anyway, what they're saying is that it barely missed the Earth by one week. And had it struck us, it would have fried the entire electrical grid. The entire electrical grid of the planet, plus all satellites, and pretty much all electrical equipment, essentially putting the entire planet back into the 1800s. Wrong. 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 You worried about this? My first recommendation is give yourself a Faraday cage. The easiest one to do is just to get a galvanized steel, steel can like this. Galvanized steel trash can like this. Line up with cardboard. Once you have your galvanized steel trash can lined with cardboard, you can put all your electrical equipment inside. All emergency radio, flashlights, all electrical equipment that, I mean, medical equipment that fit in there. Things that you simply, you know, are absolutely vital to your survival. Get a few of these. Back up, and then the backup for your backup. It's important that the that the lid is t touching the, the steel, the, the tops of the can. You don't want the cardboard to interfere with the seal. Once you have it on real tight, just to make sure it's not going to come off, you want to wrap it up in duct tape.
you have all your essential electrical equipment inside the air cage, you want to come up with a very thick blanket. Just to separate your electrical equipment inside from the top lid. This will protect you from a, from a huge coronal mass ejection or a man-made EMP, electrical magnetic pulse. These are troubling times, my friend. Prepare yourselves the best you can. All necessary to educate yourself are below in the description.